Hey guys, it's been about two weeks since I put together uh, my video on the PCIe port multiplier splitter adapter. Um, and I've since then I've been getting quite a few comments, questions, and it's been getting more popularity than I expected. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute to go through and answer some of those questions and show you a little bit more of the build. To start with, I do want to apologize. My voice sounds a little weird. I'm getting a cold. This is where I'm at now. Like I said, it's been about two weeks. I have nine graphics cards running now. There is three RX 480s, one RX 470, and all the rest are RX 580s. The motherboard on the left here has the port multiplier. All four slots on the multiplier are in use in addition to the motherboard. So there's seven GPUs on that motherboard. And then I have this separate motherboard over here uh, with two additional GPUs. One of the questions that's been asked is just in general how it's going. I did uh, pause the mining here temporarily just because the fans were very loud and I wanted you to be able to see what was going on. This is what it sounds like when it's mining. It's very loud. It's completely stable. So out of all seven cards, I'm getting 202 mega hashes per second. And you can see it's been running for 22 hours. I had restarted it manually yesterday. But aside from that, there is no noticeable loss of speed whatsoever from using four cards on the port multiplier. So one of the most asked questions has been, what motherboard am I using? This motherboard was taken from a HP DX7500. The motherboards are readily available on eBay for about $25. So what I actually do is rather than buying the individual motherboard for $25, I buy the entire computer. And you can buy these DX7500 computers for about 50 to 60 bucks on eBay. I actually got this one for 32, 33. So I was extremely pleased. <clears throat> Uh, so for that price, you get the same motherboard you saw up there with the four slots. This has three gigs of memory, and you get your hard drive. The only thing it does not have is the Windows operating system license. Other than that, I'm even going to use the same power supply. So this power supply will supply the motherboard. Is I just bought this 1,200-watt uh, server power supply, and it's got a ton of outputs. So I'll put the power supply that came with the computer on the motherboard and just power my GPUs and my riser cables off of this server power supply. And that power supply was only about 100 bucks on eBay. And that price included the power supply, the adapter, and a whole wad of cables. I don't know how many ports there is. There's quite a few ports in there. So then back to what I'm running here. Um, the CPU is a Core 2 Duo. I believe it was an E7400. And then all I have is 4 gigs of uh, 5300 memory back there. I did try running it with 2 gigs. 2 gigs is like just barely enough for Windows to run to begin with. And what would happen, interestingly, is when you start a Claymore, uh, it would detect all the graphics cards as 3 gigabyte whether they were four or eight versions. Once I bumped that from two to four gigs of memory, it saw both the four and the eight gigabyte versions just fine, and it mines all seven of those cards just fine with four gigs of memory. I've seen some people out there saying you need like eight, 12, 16 gigs to mine with this many cards on our motherboard. I've been doing it with four just fine. The system's completely stable and I'm getting perfect hash rates. One of the other questions I've been getting is, will this work with NVIDIA cards? And unfortunately, the answer to that is, I don't know. I'd love to be able to test it for you, but since Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that hit a new record, uh, well, two days ago before the price crashed down, people are scarfing up these cards like crazy. They're out of stock on Newegg, and they're like 10 times the retail price on eBay and Amazon, so I'm not about to buy one to find out. And uh, reading through the comments on Amazon, there seems to be some mixed reviews. Some people say they'll work with NVIDIA, some say they won't. Uh, in my last video, there was somebody that commented and said they wouldn't work. It probably depends on the motherboard, the card, you know, a variety of things, because I have heard from people they do work, so uh, maybe it's specific model numbers. I, I don't know, and I just can't answer that. The same with the other question I've been getting was, will the PCIe splitter work on my motherboard? I'm still trying to figure that one out. I haven't done a whole lot of research yet. I just haven't had time. But in the bit of research I have done, and from some comments I've gotten from other users, it's dependent on the number of the number of PCIe lanes your CPU can handle. Now I googled my, my CPU model number and I couldn't find that information readily available, how many PCIe lanes the CPU had. But when I set this up, I went into my BIOS and disabled all like the onboard junk I didn't need, hoping that would free up PCIe lanes. Uh, I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Again, maybe somebody else who knows a little more about this can explain that one to me. But like I disabled the onboard audio right there. I disabled the onboard video, and then there was like a, was it an IEE controller or something? I disabled that as well. Just everything I could think of to disable so it would be more stable and free up more resources. To sum all that up, I don't know if it worked with your motherboard, but it doesn't hurt to try because it's a $25 card. If it doesn't work, you know, you spent 25 bucks, or you can just return it. 
The thing is, is everybody's going after these motherboards that have seven, eight PCIe slots, and they're getting they're getting scarfed up, and then people are paying 150, 200 bucks for them. And then on top of that, you have to go out and buy a CPU, which is usually a newer model number CPU, so they're they're fairly pricey. Uh, newer memory, you got to buy all that crap. Or you could just go buy the DX7500, you know, desktop computer off eBay, and you already got your CPU, your memory, your motherboard, your power supply for the motherboard. You'd still have to buy a separate one for your GPUs. You get a hard drive. I had somebody else ask how I hang my GPUs like this. This rack was about 40 bucks at Lowe's. Uh, it was very, very cheap, and it's very strong. You can see it, it doesn't it doesn't really bend much. Um, and then all I do is I take a zip tie in the front, I put a zip tie right here, and then I put a zip tie in the back like this, just holding the back support up. Some of the cards like this one have like a little loop on the on the case you can zip tie them with and just zip tie to that. Other cards like this one didn't, so I just ran a, a twist tie like around the bottom and back up and, and zip tied it like that. It works perfectly. They don't really move, uh, you, and the spacing is perfect the way this, this, this thing is formed. I just put one card per loop, so you can fit uh, 13 per shelf like this. So you got one, two, you got three shelves, so you can fit 13 times three video cards on this stand. The last thing people have been asking was, can I mine with this card or that card? The cards that are primarily profitable right now are the RX 570, the RX 580, uh, the RX 480 and 470, along with the GTX 1060, 1070, and 1080. You can still mine with the RX 560 cards. Uh, they're reported to get about 12 to 13 mega hashes once they're overclocked. I wouldn't go out buying them because the, the profitability is just not there to buy them new anymore. But if you already have them or you can get them extremely cheap or you know you got them free laying around, you can certainly mine with them. They, they run about 80 watts and you'll profit 40 or 50 bucks a month at the current Ethereum price, which is very low right now. So if there's anything I missed, uh, please leave a comment below if you have any additional questions or there's anything else you want to see. Also, if you could please hit the subscribe button. It does help substantially with me building my channel and I would really, really appreciate it. I do try to reply to every comment that's asked, every question I can answer. So if you've got one, leave it below. Later.